so we're back again. My name is Diamond Adams, um, and I'm here for you talk. Brother AC, can you introduce yourself? Oh, sure. <laughs> Hi, everybody. What's going on? My name is uh, Alistair C. Davis, also known as AC or AC The Future. And I'm excited to be a guest here on You Talk um, and just excited for what we're going to talk about on today. Yes. So today's topic is anxiety. Um, we're just going to ask you a few questions, let the conversation flow. Um, I did want to start off to ask, how did you, well, have you ever had anxiety before? Well, yeah, um, a- absolutely. Uh um, actually, you know, with anxiety, anxiety is actually uh, normal in, in all people. Um, everyone has a level or some type of anxiety. Um, but I think uh, just kind of what we're dealing with on today is more so of uh, when it gets to that place, when it becomes a disorder. Um, and yes, in my personal world, yes, I have um, dealt with and um, had to, was diagnosed and had to figure out how to overcome uh, at the point when the anxiety that you have becomes a disorder. Right. Okay, and how are some things that you've done to help it or improve it or deal with it? Well, one of the first things is, of course, uh, acknowledging that you have a problem um, or that it is a problem. Like I said, because anxiety is common in all people, um, oftentimes at the point when it becomes a disorder, it's kind of hard for you to realize it. Uh, because you kind of look at it as just being something that may be normal. And a lot of times for the person that's dealing with it, to them, it is their norm. Um, And so you have to be at a place where you're able to rationalize, even though it feels normal to me, it's just normal concerning, I guess, life in general. If it's something that kind of makes me feel like what I'm experiencing and what I'm dealing with is out of the norm, then I have to own up to that and be willing to seek help. Um, and then once you do that, you want to take the next step, which is you want to try to seek help. Um, now that help may vary, uh, depending on, you know, your personal beliefs, um, and even your personal, I guess, situations in life. Um, but you want to seek some type of help. There are many different ways to find help to, to cope with what's going on within you emotionally. Um, and so you don't want to neglect that type of help and you want to seek out that help and find out what steps need to be taken from there on how to deal with it. One of the things that helped me to overcome it was I began to do my research about how I was feeling. And after I did my research, I'm sorry, you had a question. Oh, no, I'm agreeing with you. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to do my research about, you know, how I was feeling, what was taking place emotionally. And after doing my research about how I was feeling, it started opening me up to the idea that this might not be normal. This is a problem. After doing that, my next step was to figure out, well, what is that problem? And just doing some more research, I kind of nailed it down so I might have some type of anxiety disorder. Now, when you get to that step, the one thing that you don't want to do is you do not want to self-diagnose yourself. You know, because of the age that we live in with YouTube, with Google, social media and all of the different outlets, it's easy for us to see so many different information that we find on the Internet and other sources apply to ourselves and say, well, this is what it is. The problem with that is so many different uh, conditions, even diseases, disorders, all of these things, they kind of have similarities. And so because they have similarities, you may look at one particular disorder and say, hey, well, I have those things going on, so this must be what it is. And so then you might try to find out what you need to do from that, what you study, but you don't realize that it's really something else deeper than that or something else that's similar, but not exactly. And it's treated a different way. So you don't want to self-diagnose. Once you figure out that you might have an issue or you might have a problem and you see yourself in certain categories, then you want to seek their professional help. Um, what I did was I, I, I went and saw a doctor. And then when I saw my doctor, I told my doctor what I was feeling, what I was dealing with, what I was going through. And from there, with her professional help, she was able to diagnose and single out what type of disorder or anxiety disorder I was battling with. And then from there, I was able to take the steps to get help. Okay. Um. Do you know when it started exactly? Well, and it's, it's funny because for me personally, um, the moment when I realized that it was a problem uh, was shortly after, well, not shortly after, but it, I would say shortly after, shortly after my dad passed. Um, so that's when I realized that I was having a problem. Now, as I grew into understanding it, I understand now looking back over my life 
that I had this problem well before then. Right. His death really just kind of was the catalyst that pushed me overboard with it, so to speak. Um, and so, but sometimes it's things like that, traumatic events that happen in our life that bring up certain emotions, certain things, and take it to another degree. Um, and it's up to us in those moments to realize, okay, this is something that's happening now that I've never felt, or I'm feeling what I felt all the time at a worse degree. And so I have to figure out what is it, what is this, and why am I feeling this way? And it, it got to the point where I just came to a place where I said, how I'm feeling is not what I'm used to feeling, or what I'm feeling is a lot greater than what it would normally be. And I wanted to do something about it. I got tired of feeling the way that I felt. Right. Um, and I know with trauma, that's when you start noticing, you know, different things, things that you never noticed before, you know, when something big in life happens. Um, were you embarrassed, you know, of your condition? Did you tell anyone? Um, did anyone catch on to your system before you did? Well, see, that's one thing about it that a lot of people don't realize is there's in certain situations, um, depending, depending on how you're responding, mm -hmm. uh, it might not be detected. There's something called high functioning anxiety. And basically what high functioning anxiety is, is that the person who's battling with an anxiety disorder, uh, to the outside, they're very successful, they're completionist, they're very high achieving. So you on the outside looking in wouldn't be able to understand or grasp what's going on, on internally. Right. Um, and that's kind of the, the kind of steps that I kind of had. Um, and so with that, it's not very easy for other people to see what's going on or the mental war that's taking place in the inside of you. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's how it was for me. So, but because there is something taking place on the inside, yes, the answer to your question about is it embarrassing? Oftentimes it is um, because there's a war in your mind and you live up to it. One of the things that's, I guess, associated with high, high functioning anxiety um, is that your desire is to to please people. You want to be successful in helping people and reaching people. The problem with that is if you feel like you're not doing that, you're worn with that thought in your mind. Right. So even though I'm doing the best I can to meet your need, I'm doing the best I can to be whatever I'm supposed to be for you, mm -hmm. inside I feel like a failure. Inside I feel like I'm not meeting that need. Um, and so to you, I'm doing great. To me, I'm terrible. And you won't see that, but I'm battling with it all the time. So yeah, you feel embarrassed, you're disappointed, you're discouraged, um, and it's a it's a dark place to be emotional. Mm -hmm. But you have to be able to come to grips with learning to understand and how to deal with that piece. One of the things that, and I hope I'm not getting ahead of your questions. I know um, you're one of the things I had to realize with it is I had to learn to appreciate compliments that came my way. So especially with people who whose voices I held dear. Um, right. So me trying to be a leader, me trying to be a husband, me trying to be a father, right. whenever those compliments would come, even though I may have felt like a failure, I had to learn to appreciate the compliment and learn that these compliments are not just, you know, naysay. They are they're what they're saying because this is what they appreciate. And it helped me to change my mentality about myself right. and start to see myself the way they saw me. Yeah. Um, I feel like, even in my generation, a lot of people, you know, feel like they're not doing enough. You know, they're not enough. And um, I feel like that has a lot to do with social media, you know, and things like that, because it's like you have to be this. You have to be that. And if you're not this, you're not that you're different. You know, nobody likes different. So I feel like a lot of people, not even your generation, but every generation, you know, faces problems like that. Um, and, you know, we go to church together. So yeah. as a Christian. How has that manifested in your journey, you know, through life, being a Christian, uh, learning about God, studying the word? How has that helped you? Well, see, the the, the Bible for me was the main go to. Uh, and I don't just say that because I'm a Christian. I mean, it's, it literally opened up my eyes as I started studying some of the things that um, I don't want to say science, but health professionals mm -hmm. say that you should do concerning the deal with anxiety. I know one of the things that they tell you to help with anxiety is exercise. What the Bible says is, you know, if you want joy, you ought to leap for it. Leaping is a form of exercise. Right. Movement releases endorphins into your body that helps change your emotions. Mm -hmm. So scientific and both spiritual at the same time. So learning to realize that some of the things that we war with 
there are answers to it in the scripture. Mm -hmm. When I realized my struggle, I started looking in the scripture for answers and scriptures that dealt with what I was dealing with. So I started looking at scriptures that said that he'll keep them in perfect peace. Those that keep their minds stayed on him. So all of those things that start what I started to embody. Again, like I said, the scripture about leaping for joy. So I began to embody that. I started doing some exercises. I started meditating on the word day and night. Those were the things that I had to produce in order to help see the change that I wanted to see in my emotional state. Of course, I coupled it with prayer. When you begin to look at one of the things in the scripture, we see an instance where they dealt with a boy that had some type of disease that looked like what you would call a mental illness. But you see what Jesus in that story, he spoke to the spirit, not necessarily to the illness. So he didn't, he's cast off the spirit of the infirmity. Um, and so the boy was loose from the illness. And so those were things that I also implicated. So I prayed against anxiety. I prayed against depression while at the same time still yet seeking, you know, professional help, professional counseling, mm -hmm. medical help where necessary. I didn't just fight on one aspect, but I fought on every aspect that I had. I utilized every weapon because my desire was to overcome it. So, yeah, definitely uh, the, my faith was played a major part because it gave me no excuse based off of what I saw. I did not have to stay in the state that I was in. There was hope. There was healing. And I, it was just my responsibility to find. Yeah. And for those who are watching, I just want you guys to know, um, don't, you know, don't stay in the place you're in. You know, don't feel stuck because of embarrassment or shame. Just like Brother AC, he's learning new things to get out. He's not just doing one thing, but he's doing multiple things, you know, to get out of his head or, you know, to calm his anxiety down. So don't feel pressured against what society says, you know, do what you have to do for yourself. Um, so do you have like any triggers or anything, or do you notice little things that just set you off and they just boost your anxiety? Yeah. I mean, everybody has, has triggers. I mean, for definitely for anxiety, you know, when you look at the different types, you know, people that have, you know, post, post, post-matic distress, uh, P, PTSD or PSTD, PTSD, with PTSD, <laughs> You know, it's the trigger from the things that took place in their past. So all of those things are things that tend to happen um, that, that's triggered. It. For somebody like myself, uh, the diagnosis that I receive is generalized anxiety disorder. Mm -hmm. The trick about that is that with that type of disorder, your struggle, your emotional worry uh, is something that you personally can't pinpoint. So oftentimes if somebody has generalized anxiety disorder, if you went to ask them what are they so concerned about or what's the issue, what's the problem, they wouldn't be able to tell you mm -hmm. because it vasculates. So one day you might be worried about bills. The next day you're worried about the future. The next day you're worried about your job. The next day you're worried about your kids. And then the emotional weight that you feel or how much you worry also vasculates. So you might be scared to the point of stressed out, can't get no sleep over bills, but then when you're thinking about the kid's future, you're just kind of pondering it, but you're not stressed. But all of these things are different things that take place. So with generalized anxiety disorder, a lot of times it's hard to pinpoint what gets you there because it doesn't really take anything to get you there. It's just, you know, your way of processing the things that come to your mind. And, you know, also when you look at it, like I told you before, now, the thing about high functioning anxiety is that it's not something that can be, I guess, diagnosed. Um, so it's more so a, a way to come to, I guess, explain how people respond that battle with anxiety. Um, and with that, one of the things that they said is common with people that, that I guess they look at it saying possibly having high functioning anxiety mm -hmm. is that they're overthinking. They're constantly worried about and they overthink those problems. Right. So that's another that's another thing that's not necessarily a trigger. But but it's also, I guess, something that begins to take place. You'll look at a problem that's coming up and instead of you just saying this is a solution or this is the solution, you're thinking about every possible scenario before you make a decision. So it's, 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 it's many different things and it can be a lot. But like you said, the, the point is not to get trapped in those emotions or thoughts, but to look for the answer and to take joy in the answer to come. Right. So we're going to stop and pause for a 15 minute break. Um, Yes. <laughs>
picking up where we left off. Um, so what are things um, that you're doing to get through your anxiety and are you still doing them? Yeah, so uh, for me, it was finding those things that helped me take help take me to that place of peace. Uh, for many that don't know, I'm an artist. I know you see the pictures in the background. Um, so I do music. So music is a go-to place for me. But I can't just listen to any type of music. I have to listen to music that helps get my mind to the place in which I want it to be. So music that makes me go to a place of happy thoughts, peace, etc. That's one of the things that I do. Um, sometimes I also play video games. Sometimes that's what I have to do um, to go to that place of peace. I'll say this just in case there's anybody that's watching because I've noticed this as well. Um, there are times and seasons where I'm going through, I guess, those types of emotional battles where the music doesn't work or the video game doesn't work. Um, so you have to be versatile. You have to be able to say, this isn't working. This isn't helping me. Mm -hmm. Let me figure out what is going to help me. One of the things that is key, especially if you're a person of faith, and I hope that you are, is to make sure that you're coupling whatever you do with prayer and meditation in the word. I, that has yet to fail me. Um, mm -hmm. So oftentimes when I figure when I figure that the music isn't working or the video games or, you know, just me stepping outside, enjoying the fresh air, that those mm -hmm. things aren't working. Me channeling that with prayer and meditation always helps to get me to that place where, I stop focusing so much on the issue, the problem, or what I'm worried about, or what I'm concerned about. But I'm focusing on, you know, what I'm able to achieve, what I'm able to accomplish, and letting the rest rest in His hands. Yes, um, I think I'm the same way. Um, you said overthinker. Me personally, I think I'm an overthinker. I'll like, let's say I make a doctor's appointment to get a shot. I'll be thinking about that shot two days straight. Sometimes I can't sleep. You know, my mind wanders. I'm always thinking like, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Because I don't like needles. But um, with that, I actually do write poems and stuff like that. I got into writing about a couple years ago, I'll say. Um, I like spoken word and stuff like that. And it really like calms me. Like it makes me, I'll watch it for hours because it just takes me, you know, somewhere else. Um, so I just wanted to share a little bit of that so you're not doing all the talking. Yeah, that's good. I like that you shared that, though, because I'll just be honest for those that are watching. Um, and I, um, one of the things that, like, even for this interview, I'm playing in my head because, of you know, I, I have a perfectionist nature. I'm constantly worried about making mistakes. So right. I, I didn't know what questions you would ask. So I have my own questions in my head, how I'm going to answer those questions. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about that constantly throughout the day. How I'm going to say this, let me make sure I don't go over my time, make sure I give her time to speak, make sure I don't over talk, all of this, you know, <laughs> but I just came on and I said, what am I doing? Like, I'm being, I'm being interviewed. Let me calm down. Let me let her do her part and I'm going to do my part. And it right. took so much weight, but, you know, just that overthinking, it's natural, especially if, you know, you find yourself, you know, having that type of disorder. But again, like, like we said earlier, anxiety is, you know, a common thing. The part that makes it a disorder is when it starts hindering or causing you to make bad choices in life or causing you not to be able to make good choices. That's an even better example because sometimes it doesn't make you make bad decisions, but it right. may hinder you from making good ones. So you're, you're afraid to take the next step. You're afraid to, to go further than what you have been. You're afraid to meet new people. All of that is, it can be, you know, coupled with some type of anxiety. I'll share this with you and then I'll let you get to your next question. But like I said, uh, there's certain scriptures that this tend to help with overcoming anxiety. There's a scripture in, in a book of Matthew where Jesus literally was talking to a group of people um, and it was multitudes of people of every, um, all from the same area, but they had different levels of, I guess, associations in life. Some were rich, some were poor, some were uh, wealthy, some were, you know, commonplace, some were farmers, some were fishermen, all different agricultures of life. And he told each and every one of them, be anxious for nothing. Don't worry about tomorrow. Let tomorrow take care of itself. What was he saying? He was letting you know that the fact that you have some level of stress, some level of anxiety, don't make it, don't first, don't feel isolated. I'm releasing this to everybody. So everybody's worried at some capacity, but don't be worried. In other words, you have the ability to not to choose to worry. And sometimes I think even with those that battle with anxiety, we feel like we don't have the ability to not worry, but he was letting you know there is a capacity to overcome your fear. Right. Um, has anxiety ever stopped you from doing things in life? Maybe music when you were supposed to release it or, you know, different things like that. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. I I can't tell you how many times anxiety has played a part in so many different things in my life. I mean, to be honest with you, if it wasn't for for my wife being bold enough to speak to me, we probably wouldn't be married today. That's just how much, you know, anxiety has played a part in right. my life. Even with, you know, me being a preacher, I'd never, you know, you know how some people you know, say that with them being called, they felt the Lord told them and lead them and they stepped out and said, I got a call. But that wasn't me. People said, hey, you need to preach. And I'm like, no, nah, I don't. They're like, yeah, you do. And it's kind of, that's kind of how my life is, is to be honest with you. It's mm-hmm. it's kind of more so if people saw me being hesitant and they saw something in me and they refused to let me stay that way. Um, and, you know, that's encouraging for somebody else because a lot of times some people feel like the only way that you can really achieve is for you to have to be that person that just does what's uncomfortable for you as far as taking that step without knowing if this is the right step. But it's really about having the right circle. Um, Because if you got the right circle where you are hesitant, the people that care the most about you will help to make you make the right steps. So yeah, anxiety has played a part in hindering me. You know, there have been times where I wanted to release a song, but I was too afraid about how people would feel about it. Times where I wanted to post, I mean, (laughs) <laughs> I could be building a conversation. Somebody could text me something. I'll look at my phone and it'll take me 10 minutes to respond because I'm going in my head every response that I think and I'm playing out how I think they're going to feel about what I'm getting ready to say. Right. And, and sometimes I'll send, I'll spend those 10 minutes thinking, send the message, and then I send another message explaining the message I just sent just in case I, they misinterpret. But, you know, that's just, it's, 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 a, it's a thing that takes place. But, you know, you, you learn to overcome it and you learn to trust it. Because most of the time, you know, what I've learned from experience is those times where you overthink, where you put so much effort in so much, or you have so much fear concerning the thing, it's usually not what you think. And that's right. one of the biggest takeaways from, you know, learning to deal with anxiety is you have to first realize sometimes what I'm thinking and what I'm feeling and how I feel about it is not a reality. It's it's not my reality. It's a it's a reality I've made up in my mind. So right. it's not the truth of the situation. It's just the way that I've saw the situation and I made it my truth. So you have to learn how to overcome it. Yeah. I could definitely understand that. I have trouble with that myself. <laughs> um so what would you tell a young person who's currently dealing with things out of today? What are some tips you would give them? First tip I would give you is the first thing you want to realize is, one, you're not alone. Um, the thing about it is oftentimes if you're battling with anxiety and you don't have a lot of people around you that's open about their struggles, their issues, or you're not a part of a community of people that, that deal with those types of things, you're going to feel alone. And you're going to feel like nobody understands you. Nobody understands why you're worried. Nobody understands why you're so concerned. You might be a person that, you know, when situations come up, you look at them and you think the worst possible scenario. And the reason why you think about the worst possible scenario is not because you want the worst, but you want to be prepared for the worst. And a lot of times people don't understand that. It's not that I want bad things to happen. I'm just trying to prepare for the bad thing to happen. So if it does, I'm not emotionally distraught because I already was prepared for it. But a lot of times for other people that don't think like you, they're thinking that you're just being a bad, it's not a, I don't want to use the, that word, uh, but they're just thinking that you're being, you know, a, you, you're looking at it in the wrong context. Mm-hmm. But, you know, that's just how you, so you want to you want to understand that you're not alone. So you don't feel like, that's like weight by itself, feeling like you're alone. The second thing I would tell them is, like I said earlier, is you want to find out if you think that this situation is something that is, I guess, harmful to you. If it's something that you feel like is causing you to not be as effective as you could be, if you find yourself being in a place emotionally that you don't like too often, or if one of the things that we didn't talk about is some of the side effects that can come from anxiety. So if you see any of these side effects, um, which is IBS, IBS is irritable bowel syndrome, uh, increased fatigue, um, fogginess of mind, um, definitely uh panic attacks any of those things and you see them on a consistent right you want to see you want to think about finding some type of medical help um and when i say medical help i don't necessarily mean medication um but you might want to just seek a doctor find out what the doctor thinks you can do because oftentimes a lot of times people think if i have anxiety the answer is medicine but there's something i forget the exact terminology for it but it's like it's it's basically therapy but it's i think it's like behavioral therapy or something like that mm-hmm. that they do to help help you visualize and see how to handle those situations. So you want to look at 
something like that as well. Um, so that you can better fight, you know, what's taking place and not to be afraid of it because one of my biggest fears and then I'll, I'll end here is that I thought in me seeking, you know, professional help was me admitting that I was quote unquote crazy. Um, and that's one of the biggest things that keep people from seeking help with any type of mental illness. Mm -hmm. But the truth of the matter is there are people around you every day that have diagnosed living with and overcoming mental illness at a consistent rate. The most, you know, most common mental illnesses are right among you and they're living in society and mm -hmm. functioning like normal people. And you don't even know that they are battling with the mental illness. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot more common than we tend to make it. Um, what makes it uncommon are the abnormal cases. And just because you might have a level of mental illness or a level of anxiety, a level of depression or whatever it may be that you might need help warring in does not make you quote unquote crazy. It's just, you're just like any other person with any other type of disease. If there's help, the crazy thing is to not seek help. Right. I totally understand that. Um, so we're just coming here for you guys just to know that you're not alone in your fight. Um, talk to your family, talk to your friends, talk to a doctor. Talk to people at church. If you don't go to church, talk to coworkers that you trust. Um, you can find help anywhere. Just don't be scared to find it, to seek it. Um, so, Brother AC, I'm going to ask that you pray. All right. I'll pray out. And I'll say this right before I pray. I promise I won't take long. But uh, one of the biggest things that helped me and that most people don't realize helped me is I talked with my bishop. And he helped me to see things in a totally different light. Um, so you want to make sure, like I said, if you're one that's I definitely pray that you ascribe to faith because you're watching this. Don't knock the position that the church has in helping you overcome this. Um, this is why this was put in place. This is our attempt to help battle all aspects of life. We're getting ready to pray now. Father, we thank you for this time that you've allowed us to have this conversation. I pray now for those that may be watching this right now on YouTube, they're listening in, they might be worn with any type of depression, they might be worn with fear or anxiety, they might be worn with the thoughts that come into their heart or to their mind. Maybe they feel like nobody understands, maybe they're tired of the panic attacks, they're tired of being afraid of going in close circles, they're tired of when things are presented to them, the thoughts waste through their mind constantly throughout the day, and they're looking for a sense of peace, they're looking for a way to calm their thoughts, to calm their emotions, they want to go into these arenas and not feel shaken, they want to be able to meet new people and not be afraid. Father, help them to realize, first of all, that the answer to all of their issues and their struggles is you. I pray now that your peace will be released upon their life like never before, stir up on the inside of them, the, the, the courage necessary to reach out and find the help wherever it is, oh God, to reach out and to talk to those who have their best interests at heart and to have dialogue. I pray that you're raising up among them intercessors, people that will not just pray, but also have conversation and dialogue will speak into their life and won't allow them to stay in the situation or the circumstance that they're in. I pray even from them watching this one today, they'll, they'll have a new sense of hope and joy to know that they're not alone, that there is an answer and that there's hope. And it's in your son Jesus name that we pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen. Um, before we close out, I just wanted to give a big thanks to Bishop and Lady Perry for giving us this opportunity and our church, Roman Word Restoration Ministries. And thank you, Brother AC, for being my guest. It was a pleasure. It was an honor. I hope I said something worth being heard. <laughs> you did. I got a lot of knowledge. <laughs> <laughs>